So there's a kind of wisdom that comes with equanimity where we're just being with what's happening and we start realizing it's just happening. It's not happening to me or because of me. And there's a little space, a little less identification. And in that space and identif- disidentification, we start realizing we don't have to have things a certain way. Now that is liberating. If we can get that our happiness is not dependent on things being a certain way, then we're, ha- then we're free to be happy for no reason. You know, we can just open to how it is and find some peace, find some enjoyment in it. You know, there's a, a saying that a truly happy person is one who can enjoy the scenery on a detour. I think that's a great one, you know. Because how many moments do we feel we're being in some way sidetracked or derailed from what we thought we should be doing? Are there a lot of moments like that? What if those moments counted as real life too? And that they weren't a derailment or a detour, but those moments were just as valuable because we weren't hitching our sense of things are only good when I get these five things checked off my list and then I'm with that person in that place. You see how it opens up our life so that with with equanimity we get to respond to everything that's happening any moment with a sense of either compassion if it's painful or love if it's beautiful. So this is part of the the wisdom or the gift of, of equanimity is that when we're not hitching ourselves to the waves being a certain way, we actually get to, to live with what sometimes is called a heart that's ready for everything. A heart that's ready for everything. There's that kind of openness and availability that no matter what happens in our life, and I really mean no matter what, we have this capacity to respond from a place of tenderness and inner freedom. A heart that's ready for everything. I'm thinking of one of my friends right now who's been doing some kind of trauma work on his early childhood and is in an incredibly raw place. And, and I just talked to him a couple of days ago, very, very young feeling, very vulnerable. And his practice has been, just as I described with duck meditation, to open to it and keep sitting down in it. Because some of the way that we try to avoid rawness is we leave and it's almost like we go up, like our energy, the center of our energy goes up into our head and we're thinking and we're in some future or other world. So he keeps saying, okay, sit down in it, be with it, feel it. And as he described it, he says, the place of feeling where it feels most raw and painful is the same place of loving. When I sit down in that place, there's this kind of, it's a kind of this mojo this, that you actually sit down in the place of hurt and that very presence it's like this alchemy where love, that's where love emerges. Equanimity is the grounds of loving. And there's a reason the Brahma Viharas, the divine abodes, include equanimity. For our love to be really unconditional. For our joy to be really vast and wide open. For our compassion to be truly visceral and tender. We need that inner space of not pushing away and not controlling, just presence. So for me, this phrase, a heart that's ready for everything, is really a powerful possibility to reflect on. I mean, just imagine for a moment, just if you reflect and just sense, okay, this heart really this space of presence that can really be with everything, that can manage whatever comes my way, whatever losses, whatever failures, that there's a a refuge of presence that's big enough.
one woman Buddhist teacher uh, wrote this when she was uh, dying of cancer. She said, my days are short and as I grow weaker I experience so much gratitude for my meditation. Not only the joy and ease it brought but the hard parts. For every bored and restless sitting and every fearful fantasy and every pain and ache I sat through and every itch I didn't scratch was a training for kindness, a training for the muscle for bearing witness, for the trusting spirit that carries me now as I face my death. So this training that we're doing together, this training in presence, and learning to be with what is no matter what, uh, creates a space, a heart space, that's actually quite courageous and free. There's, there's a tremendous kind of peace that comes from knowing we can handle what's around the corner. And then, of course, the flip, as you know, is our bodies never get to relax and enjoy if we're tensing against what we think's around the corner. So for this woman, this sense of that trusting spirit that there is a place to rest, this oceanness of who I am, that can be with anything, re- that's the definition of finding peace in this lifetime. A heart that's ready for everything. So I mentioned a second route. I'm right now, I've spent most of this time and I won't be spending too much longer on this, talking about start right where you are, whatever it is. And clearly, if what is right here is traumatic, we don't just wide open say, okay, let me feel this terror. It can be a real act of compassion and intelligence to do it gradually. We start where we are and do it gradually because it can be overwhelming. But the basic principle is what's here, this life that's here, is meant to be lived and felt. And our our unlived life will keep us small and tight. It keeps us identified as a self that's in trouble. So the second pathway is remembering the ocean. And I give you by example, you know, how, how do we find a larger belonging? How when we're getting tossed around by the waves do we in some way remember, okay, there's something bigger I belong to? because that helps us to relax into what's happening. So one example is a, uh, one of the men that came back from Iraq, uh, very much struggling with uh, periods of rage and then numbness, and was in email contact with me. And what most helped him, because we were trying to find a way that not to directly feel that rage and go into the underneath it, a sense of powerlessness and terror, which wasn't going to be useful, but he first needed to in some way find something larger, a kind of resource for belonging. And for him, he was in a support group with other vets, and for him to keep reflecting one simple thing, Others feel this too. He just kept saying, others feel this too. And it was like a lifeline. It wasn't the end of the process. It was just enough to keep him there, (laughs) that he could keep on in the process of, you know, being with what was going on. Others feel this too. So just seeing the faces of the other vets in the circle and really listening, connect them to a larger world. And that was absolutely critical. Again, the reactivity that keeps us in trance comes from this identity of I'm separate, I'm alone, something's missing, something's wrong. So any real contact with others is part of the pathway to equanimity. You know, there's the research studies that show that when somebody is receiving shocks and right, you know, they're, they're measuring the fear that comes from the shocks and if they hold the hand of someone that they care about, the fear response is less. In other words, the limbic system isn't taking over. 
there's more presence. We know that if you hug another person for 20 seconds, it begins to produce oxytocin, which helps the parasympathetic is kicking in, the limbic system chills out, you know, we get into again more of that space where there's less of a separate self-identity and more freedom. So for each of us, and I I think this is really a part of our, our process, it becomes really valuable to sense, well, when I'm in trouble and I'm being tugged around, what helps me remember a larger truth? What helps me remember a larger truth? Is it thinking of somebody that you love and sensing their eyes? Before we know it, we're grabbing something. We're trying to make ourselves comfortable. We're having our judgment about somebody else. It just happens. And if we can be good-humored about it, it's part of the reason that I tell jokes and goof around is because if it's grim, it's not going to work, you know? Really, I mean it meaning the whole path. You can't do duck meditation if you're grim because then you start getting down on yourself and then you start sinking. So we each need in a way a a reminder like that leaf that says, yes, the conditioning's here, that's the predicament, and in some way that can just inspire us to kind of commit ourselves. May I notice it with humor, with kindness, and may I have the intention to come back home. Any moment that you have the intention to come back home, you already have opened the doors wide to your inner sanctuary. This is a poem by the poet Kaviri. She says, the old truth made you run a thousand miles inside an arid desert, desperate for an oasis. Sit and close your eyes. Inhale the breeze of kindness. Exhale the toxic judgments dehydrating you like a prune. Feel the pattern of the pain of old patterns trapped in tense muscles. It's okay to cry, to taste the salt of possibility. Just be. Just breathe. Let waves break against the silence returning you to a new and deeper truth. <coughs> so we'll, in a few moments, we're going to uh, some uh, have a meditation together, just practice a little bit. But I just wanted to say that <clears throat> I began tonight talking about some of the misunderstandings about equanimity that if we get too open and we're not controlling, you know, are we really going to be serving transformation? And I hope you get that true transformation arises from that quality of presence. Not only transformation, but also our capacity to really uh, relish and love and savor life. One of the teaching stories that I think in our generation has, has kind of gone around a lot and is so, has so much truth to it is from Ajahn Chah, who's a, a really great, great teacher. Um, he describes having this glass that he loves. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's been handmade or whatever, a cup. And he says, do you see this? He says, I love this glass. It holds the water admirably. When the sun shines on it, it reflects the light beautifully. When I tap it, it has a lovely ring. Yet for me, this glass is already broken. He says, for me, this glass is already broken. When the wind knocks it over or my elbow knocks it off the shelf and it falls to the ground and shatters, I say, of course. But when I understand that this glass is already broken, every minute with it is precious. So this is the power of equanimity, that it actually, um, rather than being on our way somewhere and trying to manage our lives, it frees us to cherish our lives, moment by moment. And in a most basic way, 
in the moments when we're not fighting, we're not judging, we're not grasping, when we're just being, we gain the deepest wisdom, which is a realization of who we are. Because the grasping, fearful self dissolves. The sense of the who I am is, is small and separate dissolves. In the moments of equanimity, we begin to sense this mystery of awareness that's our true home. It's truly what we are. And it's out of that presence, that awareness, that we can then respond to the world with that, that purity of love that really is the way we want to live. So I invite you into our final meditation tonight uh, in that spirit. So we enter equanimity with a pause and just enjoy that, just sense, okay, a moment of pausing. There's not a sense of rolling forward to anything, it's just right here. So invite yourself here. Feeling your breath. Relaxing with your breath. And from this place, we'll just do a very simple investigation of equanimity. And first to bring to mind some situation in your life that you know brings up reactive response, where you, some situation that gets you nervous or angry, upset, but not something that's trauma traumatizing. Just to give you, I just want you to have a taste of this. Maybe something brings up a lot of judgment. Maybe in a relationship, the way somebody's behaving or something you're judging yourself for, something coming up you're nervous about. Just let the situation be enough right here in front of you. You can sense in your body what it brings up. Maybe it's just, you know, the unpleasantness of, of fear or anger. But just notice it and see if it's possible just to commit yourself to contacting what's here, to noticing it, to feeling it fully. See if you can sit down in it. So you're actually letting your awareness fully enter into your body, enter into the throat or chest or belly or wherever you feel it. It helps you to breathe with it, breathe with it. So in some way you're just sitting down in the feelings and let the, the thoughts about the situation kind of recede a little. So you just feel what, whatever comes up, whatever is so bad about this situation, just to feel in your body, okay, this is just as it is. Rather than being a self that something bad's happening to, just sense the awareness that's here with unpleasantness. the intention simply to let be, wakefully, kindly. And notice if you feel some space around what's going on. Notice a sense of who you are when you're even moving in the direction of equanimity. Continuing this examination, bring to mind something pleasant in your life, something that you find to be fun or that you feel grateful for, that gives you gratification. 
something that's either beautiful or something in a relationship with somebody that you really enjoy. And just notice as you bring that to mind that you can bring it very close in and let yourself feel physically what it's like to appreciate this or enjoy it. Just open to those feelings and commit yourself to contacting them, to sitting down in them. So you're saying yes to the pleasantness, sitting down in the pleasantness. And then just to add on, remind yourself of the difficult situation. Just have that storyline there. And then let whatever is moving through you, move through you. Let both situations be in mind. And sense the ground of awareness and kindness that can include them both. And as you do, as you kind of sense a kind of swirl or might feel like a confusion or mix of different sensations or feelings, whatever's going on right now, just let it be there. Yes, sit down in it. And as you do, just imagine that this whole room, everyone here, is experiencing this range of pleasantness and unpleasantness perhaps calm or sleepy or numb or excited. That everyone here is experiencing this play of sensations and emotions and that others elsewhere, outside of this room, people you know everywhere, everywhere in the world, there are people that are just experiencing this play just as you are of aliveness and sense the space that all floats in. Just sense the space that all floats in. This whole world of sensation and aliveness. Sense who you are when you're aware of this space of awareness. just let go into that mystery, into that stillness and silence, into that presence that's sourced in vastness. Again, the words of Kaviri, her last name is Patel, Kaviri Patel. She says, just be, just breathe. Let waves break against the silence, returning you to a new and deeper truth. Namaste.